How's it going everyone? And in this video, we're gonna be walking through a homemade PID controller that I've been working on for the last few weeks using Arduino, and we will jump into it. So basically, the whole point of a PID controller is to control some variable around a set point. And in our case, what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep this ball at a set distance from the proximity sensor. And it's on a tilt, so we can change the tilt degree. So basically in our case, what we have is the proximity sensor reading an input, which in this case would just be, you know, the number of centimeters that the ball is away from the sensor itself. It gives that value to the Arduino itself right there. The Arduino being the PID controller, looks at the air, basically the distance from, or the current distance from the proximity sensor, and then the set point distance calculates that air. With that air, it then figures out, based on the KP, KI, KD terms for the PID controller, how much it needs to adjust the little micro servo motor uh, that's changing the tilt just like that. So using all this stuff, we're able to basically keep this ball around that set point value, which in my case, I have it right now set to 10 centimeters from the actual thing. And you can come in here and you can see how you can actually just push this thing aside and, and watch it respond to that input to try to keep it around that set point. And so like right now uh, on this chart, I have it showing the set point, which is that blue line. It's also showing the red line, which is the amount of air present. Air can take on a positive or a negative value. And then we also have the PID value itself, which comes from those tuning parameters. Uh, and this, that's what the Arduino itself is calculating in real time for us. So that's how we're controlling all these things. And like you can see the I term kick in. So if I just hold the ball right here, you can see how the PID term just keeps on increasing just like that. Um, so it's basically making the tilt go as big as it possibly can uh, to accommodate, to get this thing to go back to that set point value around the middle. And it's just going to keep on figuring this out uh, before it can get it to where it wants. Um, and so that's how it works. The parts I used here are super cheap. Uh, I got a hot glue gun on Amazon that came with the hot glue for only five bucks. Uh, and I'm also using some little wine corks to have support and some cardboard with the hot glue holding it all together to make this little canal thing. Um, and sometimes this guy gets stuck because I'm using some pretty cheap stuff. But um, yeah, this, these little servos are not the strongest, unfortunately. But yeah, you can see it giving its its best effort. So I had to make this thing smaller. Originally the tilt was longer, but the torque that that servo needed to provide wasn't enough for what it needed. Um, but I just think it's really cool stuff to see how in real time we're actually controlling a of an actual physical thing. Um, and yeah, this is a little breadboard right here and I need to make sure that all those things stay connected. Obviously this is not a production ready unit, um, but yeah, I also have another little wine cork holding up the servo motor. That is a paper clip that connects the servo to the actual tilt itself. And then we've got uh, basically the little straw or plastic hard thing to provide a little pivot for the tilt as well as for uh, the attachment site for the servo to the tilt. And we've just got our little wires in here. Um, so this whole setup was pretty cheap and I will provide a uh, link or you know some kind of document that basically shows these dimensions because these little servo motors that come with these Arduino starter kits are not that torquey, obviously. So it just takes uh, a lot of iterations before I was able to figure out like how big could this be um, to, to make it actually happy and, and work. Um, and right now it's not even operating at its like maximum speed because I don't want to break the hot glue. Uh, but you can see it is working and I can also walk you guys through the code that was used to create all this stuff. I'll post this all to GitHub so you guys can check it out if you'd like. Um, but yeah, so this is it working and stay tuned. All right guys, so we're gonna walk through the actual Arduino code now, and all this is gonna be on GitHub, so you guys can clone this repo and build on this if you'd like. Uh, so basically, the first thing we're doing is we're including libraries for the actual servo motor itself and new ping, which is meant for that proximity sensor. So new ping is what's actually letting us figure out exactly what is that distance. So it contains the logic to let us figure that part out. And then servo is helping us manipulate the actual micro servo itself. Um, and then, you know, these first lines through 14 are just defining the pins on which I've placed these things on my Arduino itself. And then uh, I also have some other things that I'm defining up front uh, to be the operating limits of my little setup. Because, you know, if you guys do this thing, you have a different length of your uh, paperclip, you would have different 
upper and lower bounds, which for me, in my case, it was like, how far to the left can I tilt this thing? How far to the right can I tilt it before the actual tilt itself touches the ground? Um, so that was a factor in this that I just decided to code in uh, up top. Um, and I also have an old tilt degree. So basically when your program runs, it will initialize your servo to a set degree. And so in my case, I just had to go to the midpoint um, like that. I'm also going to be defining a or declaring a variable called cumulative air and setting this to zero so that we can remember uh, the total amount of air that's accumulated in our system because this is needed for the I term in a PID controller. And we're also going to want to remember what our previous air was, and that's for the D term when we're trying to calculate you know, the air rate or how has this air evolved since the last time we looked at it or the last cycle of our PID controller. So um, that's uh, two important variables that we do need to declare outside the scope of our methods uh, for this Arduino function to work. And I'm also defining the KP, KI, KD terms. These are things that you would be tuning as like an engineer in practice. Um, and in my case, you know, I, I just gave it my best shot and um, these are what worked for me to give you the performance that you saw in the beginning of the video. Um, and yeah, and then these next two lines basically are just defining objects uh, of the my servo uh, class and the new ping sonar class that we can call later. Um, and so uh, that part of the logic, I'm, I'm letting that exist in libraries. And you can download these libraries from Arduino in the uh, manage libraries window that they have. So anyone can just go in here and uh, you know download these if you don't already have them. That's open sourced. Uh, so you're just gonna just gonna close that out. Uh, and then we enter into our loop function. Um, the when you call the write method for my servo, that's when it will actually move the servo to a different degree. Um, and so in our case, like the very first thing it does on the setup method is uh, say that here's the servo pin, and it's gonna then tell the servo to move to the lower limit. You know, you can have it move to that uh, midpoint um, as well. Uh, it's it's entirely up to you. Um, but that's just the setup that I have. And then we enter into our loop function right here. So the very first thing we do at the beginning of our loop is basically figure out what is that current distance between the proximity sensor and the ball. And once we know this value, um, if the distance is greater than zero uh, is a logic check that I added because the proximity sensor, these guys are super, super cheap and they do throw lots of zeros sometimes, especially if the ball gets too close to the sensor or too far away. And putting garbage into your PID controller will mean that your PID controller will put garbage out. Um, so basically what I'm doing in line 41 is ignoring any values that are zeros. Um, so as long as our PID, or as long as our proximity sensor is returning something that isn't zero, we'll actually act on it. We'll actually put this into our PID controller uh, to figure out how it should manipulate uh, the the servo itself. Um, and another thing I want to call out is I'm using doubles for a lot of these things because it allows you to have a bigger range of positive and negative values. It also allows you to have decimal places um, that you can't have if you used integer values. So if I used integer values and I said int kp was 1.5, it would truncate it to just one. Um, and so you don't get that same degree of precision uh, that you would have by using different data types in Arduino, which is really just C++. Um, but yeah, so I just, I think it's best practice to use doubles across the board. Um, uh, as long as you're not defining too many variables to exceed the, the memory limits of your Arduino itself, you should be good. Um, but this code works perfectly fine on an Arduino Uno, as you guys saw. Um, so that's how that part's working. And then uh, these other parts right in here are responsible for basically uh, so after we've figured out what is that current distance and it's not zero, so we validated that you know it's not a trash input value, um, we go to uh, this PID function. So it basically takes in that distance and it's going to return what the new tilt degree should be for our servo. So if we go down here to our actual definition of the PID function, um, just trying to comment this as well as I can so that other people can follow. Uh, but we have our set point defined. So in my case, that set point was that 10 centimeters from the proximity sensor, which was about the midpoint on that tilt. Um, and I'm also printing this out along with other things so that we can have a nice little visual graph to help us figure out or troubleshoot why this thing isn't working. Um, and so in our case, 
the, the P value of a PID controller is calculated by simply multiplying whatever the air is by a given constant. Um, so the way you tune P, I just started with one, uh, you know, 1.0, and you adjust it accordingly. So basically, if your KP term is too big, the amount of adjustment will be too much and it's going to end up having oscillatory behavior. So basically your ball will just keep on hitting either side really hard and maybe even going off the rack. So um, you start by tuning the P value and, or, or specifically the KP value. Um, and then once you're happy with that and it's making you know reasonable sized adjustments based on the amount of air that it's getting, um, you can then move on to calculating or tuning the I value. Um, and so basically the I value is based on that cumulative air term. So like I was showing in the video, if the ball ever gets stuck on one side and it's not rolling and you need it to roll, the cumulative air is going to keep on increasing during that entire process. Uh, and then you're gonna be multiplying that by the KI term. Uh, and KI was another tuning parameter for me. I think it was 0 0.05 that ended up working the best. Um, but again, these are all things that would be dependent on your specific setup and system. Um, but that's that's what worked for me. Um, and then in terms of the D value, so this is that derivative term of our PID controller. So this is where we're going to be essentially looking at the air minus the previous air. So, you know, if on like our fourth cycle through this, we know that air in that fourth, you know, time window was this, and we knew the previous air, that lets us calculate a air rate. Um, so like in the case of the position of the ball, um, that would tell us its its velocity essentially because we'd be subtracting two distances and, and looking at the difference in time. And so based on the ball's velocity, that's another thing that our PID controller would be taking into account. So like if the ball has a really big velocity uh, in, in a particular direction, our KD term is going to be responsible for trying to adjust that because if the ball's flying down the wrong way, you're going to need to have a bigger uh, adjustment to your servo to get that tilt to come back up enough to actually help push the ball back more than would have been just with like a, a P only controller. Um, so that's how this D term comes in to help us have better performance, which is basically how well can we keep this ball around that set point value, uh, in our case, 10 centimeters. So um, I'm just putting all these terms together uh, and our PID value is literally just the summation of them. And then we're going to print this value to the graph that we saw. And um, Arduino is pretty cool at, at letting us just visualize this stuff so quickly. Um, and then from there, um, after it's calculated the PID controller inside of this function, I also want it to uh, increment the cumulative error by whatever that current cycle was. So we started with zero and then we're gonna add to it and keep on adding to it. Error can be positive or negative. So your cumulative error eventually, hopefully should come to zero. Uh, over time as it as it oscillates or fluctuates, but it should get closer and closer to that set point value. And then we also need to remember the previous error because that previous error is what we were using in our D value calculation. So um, that's that stuff right there. Um, and then in terms of the, this was the part I, I, I got stuck on for a long time um, in terms of the coding, but when you are calculating, after you've calculated your PID value, your PID value is gonna be essentially proportional to or very closely associated with your air like by definition that's what the kp term is doing um, so it can have a positive and negative values um, but it, what you would need to do is you would need to figure out how to map the pid values that are coming from your controller to the actual like degrees that your servo can tilt to um, and so in my case what i ended up just doing and it took me a really long time. This is the part that's it's very critical if you, because it, it will just make this whole thing not work at all, um, is basically figuring out like what range to map the PID value range to, uh, how, do you, how do you map that range to the servo degree range? Uh, and so that's where Arduino has a built-in function called map. And so you give it the input uh, value or PID value, and then you're telling it what is the expected range of your PID values. So what's the minimum PID value range? What's the maximum PID value range? And then you're telling it, I want to map that to an output range. In our case, that output range is going to be the servo degree tilt. And so we're gonna have a, so, a servo lower limit degree. That was that operating limit that we know. 
and then an upper limit degree. Again, that stuff just comes from your physical system. Um, but that is what's going on here. In my case, um, I, and this is what I've seen other people do, and, and it, it just works for me, um, but you know, maybe there's a better solution here. Uh, what I did is I essentially took the servo range. Um, so in my case, you know, if my minimum servo value, which we can just go up here, was uh, set to 80, and my maximum uh, range or degrees was 120, so that means my range is gonna be 120 minus 80, so that's 40. Um, so the, the, our, the, the limits that I would be expecting it to have would be basically, um, between plus 40 and minus 40, cause that air, that, that PID value itself can take on those negative values. And, um, so that's what I have it set to. And then, and then we're just mapping that to that positive range from 80 to 120, uh, which in my case were the actual operating ranges for my, my particular unit. Um, and then another thing that is, I think, super important to do uh, is to just have a, a final sanity or, or, or safety check in the logic itself just to say if for whatever reason we are getting a ridiculous PID value because that proximity sensor can spit out anything. Um, you know, ideally you would have a good idea of what it can spit out, but you know, worst case scenario, something comes in that just completely messes up the, the input and it just calculates an insanely huge error uh, and, and your PID value ends up being insane. Like the way that we don't break this actual little servo is we have this final thing to just say, you know, if this new servo angle that I want to give my servo is greater than that upper operating limit, make sure that we're setting the new servo angle to that upper operating limit. And same thing for the, the minimum values too. So um, it, it's basically just a safety you know, some safety around this that I really appreciate and I, I would advocate others to do the same. Um, and then finally, what we do is we actually just return that angle. So out of our PID function, where it comes back the uh, angle. So our input to this function was literally how many centimeters is the ball away from the proximity sensor and then the output is, you know, what is the new tilt that you should have? So we go all the way back up to our uh, loop function right here and we've spit out the new tilt degrees that it should have and then I defined a function called update servo uh, and the reason why I did this is again kind of safety uh, I wanted to include a delay time here so that it could not move too quickly because these servos can actually move pretty fast and uh, it was like breaking some of the hot glue and, and other early prototypes or revisions that I had of this thing that were a bit annoying so Basically, you know, if, if I wanted to slow this thing up, I would just change, I would increase delay time milliseconds. Um, and that would, it, basically what this function does, the update servo function takes in the, the previous tilt and the new tilt, and then it breaks it up into little chunks that it will do in set time intervals. So if it needed to go from like zero to 90, uh, it'll do that in the specified, you know, time range. It won't just do that all at once, which would lead to stuff breaking. So. Um, that's what this function is doing right here. Uh, and we've gone over what our PID function does. And the last thing that we do is we just make sure to, to persist what was that uh, new tilt, and that will now become our old tilt. Uh, so that the next time we go through this, we'll have that old uh, tilt for our update servo method too. So um, that is the logic. That is how this whole thing works. And I hope this video is helpful. And if you guys are getting into this stuff, I think it's super cool. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you again for watching and be well.